This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have an LG oven that isn't heating. And this is an unusual type of igniter replacement. Uh, a little bit different from the standard, so I thought I'd show you guys how to do this one. So first thing I'll do is unplug it and I'm gonna open up the door by pulling back on these latches. This one was kind of stuck, so I had to kind of pry it off to get the latch to fold back. Once you get those to fold back, then you can lift up on the door and bring it up towards you by about half an inch, and then the door will come off. You can get that out of the way. You don't have to remove the door. It just makes it a little bit easier to get in to do the repair. You want to pull out all the racks and they just come right out towards you. Nice and easy. And once you get the racks uh, pulled out, the next thing is to remove the uh, fan housing. So we got that fan in the back and that's actually where on this model where the igniter lifts, which is really unusual. We're going to remove all these perimeter screws. <clears throat> They're just Phillips head screws that come out really easily. And the burner tube is not on the horizontal plane on this model. It's, it's on the vertical plane. And that's to give a little bit more room inside the oven cavity so you could put even a larger turkey in there. So we just got off that piece. And then there's another uh, panel we have to remove. Same thing, just has a few peripheral Phillips head screws sped up the camera a little bit. Once we get that panel off, we have access to the burner tube and to the igniter. And these are just really easy to replace igniters. We're just gonna use a standard Frigidaire Electrolux uh, igniter from Amazon. They're only about $17. We'll put a uh, link in the description below so you can easily order it. So this panel just comes off. <clears throat> We're gonna kind of lift up and pull back at the same time. And then once you get that panel off, we can see the burner tube here underneath the fan, and then the igniter is over there to the right. We're going to use a stand, uh, Phillips head screwdriver to remove one Phillips head screw, and we're going to take the igniter and lift up a little bit and wiggle to where it comes off, and then we can easily now cut the wires and put on the new igniter. The new igniter comes with little porcelain wire nuts, which makes it really easy to connect the igniter wires with the wires that are coming from the oven to bring power to the igniter. And you can take either one of the igniter, or either one of the uh, wires coming from the oven and hook it up to either one of the um, wires from the igniter. So we're cutting those wires. We're gonna strip them back by about a quarter inch. Here's the igniter that we use, um, pretty cheap. Get these from Amazon. And again, I'll put a link in the description below. So we're cutting the wire and then stripping it back about a quarter inch. And then we're gonna take our porcelain wire nuts and use them to connect the wire from the oven to the wire from the igniter. And when you connect them, you just wanna put the two wires into the into the um, wire nut and then turn it righty tighty until it's uh, turned as far as it'll go. You feel like it's a really tight connection. And then we'll do the same thing with the next set of wires, one from the oven and one from the igniter. And either one of the wires from the igniter can hook up to either one of the wires from the oven. There's no polarity issue at all. So we got the two wires lined up here, and then I'm going to use the wire nut, put it on, <clears throat> and then twist to the right, get it really tight. So these igniters last about four or five years, depending on how much baking that you do. But when they get tired, um, you might get an F09 error on the LG oven. It just means it didn't reach the temperature. And that's a result of the igniter not igniting the gas because it doesn't glow bright enough to safely allow the safety valve to let in the gas to cause ignition. And it's just because the igniter is kind of worn out. <clears throat> so 
we get those wires on, we're going to kind of stuff that wire back into the firewall to get the wires out of the way. And before we put the covers on, we're going to test it by plugging it back in and then setting it to bake to see if we get a nice flame. <clears throat> so we got it plugged in, set it to bake, press start. And then we'll take a look. The igniter should start to glow. There we go. And in about 30 seconds, it should glow to where it's hot enough to let the gas flow in and then ignite the gas. <clears throat> there we go, we have good ignition and nice blue flame. Little um, yellow and orange tinges is okay, but mainly a blue flame looks good. And we'll go ahead and turn it off, let it cool down. I'm putting the panel back on, kind of pushing it down into the bottom panel and then setting it back. And then <clears throat> we'll add those Phillips head screws. So it's kind of nice, we can do this whole procedure just right there in the front of the oven. We don't have to take the uh, stove out or move it around. Don't have to really disconnect anything, just have to unplug it <clears throat> and then remove a couple of panels and you have good access. So we're just zipping those in, sped up the camera a little bit. And we'll do the same thing with the uh, nice blue enamel cover. Get that in position, put one at 12 o'clock, and then zip in the peripheral ones. So in all my years of doing appliance repair, I've never seen this model before, where the igniter's uh, back there and the whole burner tubes on the vertical plane. That's really unusual. Pretty cool design, seems to work well. We have seen uh, convection fans where there's an electric element around the convection fan there in the back, but I've never seen a gas setup like that. That's very interesting. It seems to work well. And it does create a bigger area where you could, you could have a lot more things in there as you're baking. So we're putting those racks back in. We'll put the door back on, put the forks back into those holes, make sure they line up. And then we're just going to let the door set back slowly. And then we're going to push these little closures back toward the back of the oven, the right side, left side. And then we can go ahead and close the door and give it a test. So it's not necessary to remove the door, but it can make it a little bit easier to do this procedure. And you can get in there and clean the oven really well with the door removed too. There we go. And we did a test, set it for 350, and it got up to 350 pretty fast. Took about 12 minutes. I'm just setting the clock now to the current time. So when you turn off the power, you're going to, you're going to lose the, uh, the proper time. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.